Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with another Vinyl Finds video. This one is brought to you by Peroni. Okay, Coco, you can stop that shit. I was doing I was on a live chat right now with Metal Mickey. Um uh, he's I think it's titled Beer and Boredom. But I got a kick out of I get I always get a kick out of Metal Mickey. Anyways, I didn't think I'd be making a video this soon after Record Store Day. I bought nine albums for Record Store Day, two seven inches, and I spent quite a bit of money. So I didn't really think I'd be making this video so soon. But I did have three records that I had bought in prior to Record Store Day. I didn't they I mean I'm not gonna make a video with just three records. I bought two used records today. I bought another Record Store Day title and I got some of the best BCLT I've ever seen in my life from James Griffiths. Fantastic. Fantastic. But anyways I'm gonna start with the I'm gonna kinda go with reverse order. And I got Think Pink by Twink. It's the double album record store day. Sounds like there's something in here still. Well, maybe not. Oh yeah, there is. Oh, that's the price. I ordered this uh, from Bull Moose on Monday morning at 4 a.m., 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Whatever they didn't sell, they were selling online. Well, not quite everything. The Pink Floyd one, only available in store, but uh, no big deal. <coughs> I kind of wanted to get one of those, though, from them and see if it, maybe I got the mispress. I was kind of hoping to get the mispress, you know. But anyways, double album. This came out, was recorded in uh, summer of 1969. Came out in 1970. Um, it sounds like something from 68, maybe? 67, 68. Really psychedelic. Um, this album has been reissued many times by Twink himself. And I think Twink is the one that's behind this. Um... Twink was in uh, Tomorrow. He was in a band before that, but I don't recall the name. Um, he was in Tomorrow with uh, Steve Howe, from, uh, who went on to Yes. Keith West was the vocalist. I guess he left, and then Twink left. They had the, the song White Bicycle, I believe. He joined... Uh, the Pretty Things, which was a not a very big band in the U.S., but pretty. I guess they were bigger in the U.K. And then he made this solo album while he was in The Pretty Things. He then joined the Pink Fairies. And I believe I saw Twink with the Pink Fairies in the summer of 71. I'm pretty sure he, he was in the band at that time. But anyways, this is a really cool psychedelic album. I highly recommend it. It comes with this card that says, This is a copy number 357 of a strictly limited edition of 1000, issued by Sunbeam Records in April 2019, and it's signed in a marker by Twink himself, which I thought it was a pretty cool touch, you know. It comes with this lyric sheet insert. The records, it's a double record. They're both on red vinyl and with these red labels. Looks pretty cool. This is a mono mix of the album. And this is a stereo mix of not all the songs, I don't believe. Pretty interesting uh, label there. I mean, it's, it's like it's a test pressing, not for sale, factory sample, blah, blah, blah. Comes with this really nice booklet. Pictures of Twink. Yeah, it, this is really cool. Let's see if there's any bigger photographs. Pretty much, yeah, they're all pretty small photos. I don't know how well they're going to come out on this. And, yeah. Really pretty cool uh, ride up in here. And I was happy to get that. That was one of my number one wants. 
for Record Store Day and I was unable to get it. It sold out at Amoeba. The only one I have left is the Idols, <coughs> British punk band. There's a number of them on sale on eBay, but they're all coming from Europe. So I, after you pay the shipping, it's like way too much. Next, I'm going to show some uh, BCLT and from James Griffiths. The Piranhas, a couple of 7 inches. These are both came out in 1980. <coughs> this one here, I kind of like this one better, I think. The A-side is Tom Hark. It's kind of a, it's a reggae type sound. And then side B is Getting Beaten Up by, Getting Beaten Up, which is a cool song. And then Boyfriend. And then this one, I Don't Want My Body, another cool song. But I kind of like the uh, B-side, I'm Gonna Get Well Again. The dude plays harmonica. And what's this guy's name? Uh, Boring Bob, I guess, is the singer. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, it sounds like a 1970s punk, which I love. But <clears throat> the thing that blew me away was this record here. And what is it? Well, let's get this out. It comes with this. Sheets ahead. It's a L7. Pretend we're dead. This is a promo for radio stations. And it's got this questionnaire on there. You know your personal reaction, the audience reaction. They're trying to get the song "Pretend We're Dead" to be played on uh, UK radio stations. And it comes with this letter. And this is fantastic. This is something that you would not find in in the US. It was sent to the UK to try to get drum ups, you know, some support for uh, L7. And let me get the record out. It's got this etching on this side with the famous L7. There you go. And on this side, it's got the song, Pretend We're Dead. Promotion, it says here, promotional only, not for sale. Fantastic. I mean, I was blown away. I've never seen this. I mean, it was a, for UK radio stations. And it comes with this little booklet. And it's not, it's almost like it's a zero Serial graph or whatever what do they call those? The print on here, it's very cool. But yeah. Got different write ups about the band and uh I love it. Thanks, James. Um I'll send something your way, but I don't think it's gonna be as unique as this. There's not a chance in hell. Try and think of something. I I know a lot of times you mention bands that are kind of easy to find here and you can't find them over there. I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. Oh, pepperoni. Okay, now the two used albums that I picked up today. This is an album that I've been looking for since I started buying vinyl again. And it's the second Grand Funk. Self-titled. Known as the Red Album. I dig this album. I mean, this is so hard and heavy. Very cool shot of the band. But yeah, this is... I mean, the bass in this is just so... It is turned up to 10. 10 plus. I mean, there, there's parts of it, man, where the guy's jamming on the bass. and I think he's only playing one note, though, you know. But it sounds fantastic. Um, I have this album by Grand Funk. I have the one that was the follow-up, I believe, Closer to Home. Those are my two favorites. I would like to get their first one. I don't like it as much as the second and third. After that, I don't care for Grand Funk that much anymore. I did, in the 80s, buy quite a few of their albums. I recently, they were in The, the Purge. You know, they were an American band and all I, I'm. I'm just not a fan of that stuff.
But this, if you like the hard and heavy stuff, this is as hard and heavy as it gets. Fantastic. And it's an original on that green capital label. Very cool. 1970, I believe this came out. I believe so. But yeah, that was fantastic. And the other one I got, it's an album I bought when it first came out, but uh, it was a victim of my divorce. And it's the only album I don't didn't have by The Clash, and it's Santa Nista. This is an album that some people pan. It's fantastic. I, I like this album now more than I did when it came out. I always thought, it, man, if they would have made a double album, this would have been just as good as London Calling or better. But I, I haven't listened to side five and six yet. Um, side one and two, on the first record, there might be one song that I think they could have done without, and that's Hitsville, UK. That's, I'm not a big fan of that song. And uh, on side three and four, there was one song that I thought wasn't as good as the rest. But I mean, you're talking out of two records, two songs that aren't quite as... I dug it, man. It's a lot, got a lot of dub, reggae shit, and and different, a lot of different styles. Um, it's not like their first punk album, but that's fine, you know. Fantastic album cover. Now I have everything by The Clash, and well, everything that I want, and I can do a Clash video now. Now I know I said my next video was gonna be The Misfits. I'm looking for a box set I have of theirs, and then I will make that. And there's a couple other videos I want to make, so we'll see. Uh, the albums, like I said, it's a triple album on Epic. <coughs> Fantastic. It comes with this poster, which it's like... Uh, all the lyrics and little knickknacks. I guess I'll open it up. But very cool find. I mean, I'm a fan of The Clash. Now, the three albums that I had purchased before Record Store Day. This one here, <coughs> Saigon Rock and Roll. It's a double album, Gatefold. I still have it in the shrink. And I think I'm going to keep it in the shrink. I don't know what's inside, but you know what? I'm a shrink dude, you know? I've turned into one at least. But this is fantastic. This uh, Vietnamese classic tracks, 1968 to 1974. This is some whacked out stuff. Some of the vocals on this are so trippy. You know, the <coughs> Asian female singing. But this is a really good one. If you see this, I would if you and you like different types of music from around the world. This is basically western style music with a Asian spin on it. But yeah, check that out, dude. That sums it up right there, you know, that picture and this one too. She's so cool, you know. The super hip and the hippie, you know. Cool album. It's a double album. It's on black vinyl. And it's on these labels. It's sublime frequencies. Very cool shit. And the next two albums were both sealed. <coughs> so I had to get them. It's a band, one of my favorite punk bands from Boston. In fact, they might be my favorite. And it's Gang Green. I Ate One Before You is the name of this. It's the EP from 1988. And my only complaint with uh, Gang Green is they drink Bud, you know? Come on, Bud. I mean, we used to kid that Budweiser cans are, the only thing they're good for is ashtrays, you know, you put your burnt cigarettes in them. But yeah, this is great. Bartender, Lost Chapter, Rent, Put Her on Top, and Come In You. Just a fantastic EP. Like I said, this did have the shrink. The shrink was a bit torn up, so I just took the shrink off of this one. 
and I think it's on Road Runner. Yeah, Road Runner. Fantastic. And the other one that was sealed was Gangrene Older Budweiser. And <coughs> this shrink is a little, little ripped on the top, but I kept it. They both had these little price tags on here where it says $8.98, and that's crossed off. And another price tag on top of that, $4.98. Um, this is the album that came out after that EP. Great stuff. I, I dig uh, Gangrene. I only have their very first 7-inch. I want to get their uh, first album. It's been repressed many a times. I'll probably end up getting a repress, but I would like to get an original. But yeah, cool. A lot of straight edge bands came out of Boston. Really militantly straight edge, you know, like SSD control. And these guys, man, they were party animals. That's what I liked about them. And this one is on Emergo. Whatever that is. Emergo! Very cool. So that's my final finds. I didn't think I would be making one so soon. And uh, thanks, James. This is absolutely amazing, dude. I mean, I love L7. One of my favorite bands from the 90s. And that is just like the cherry on top of my collection. I'm definitely making an L7 video. They're, I'm going to wait till their new album comes out. And they do have a best of on Slash coming out. I'm going to get that. So I'll, I'll make a L7 probably this summer. Anyways, take care, everybody. Um, I'm wearing my Tales from the Dead Wax. I'm kind of wondering uh, what happened to Andy Borders. I hope he's doing good. And we're waiting on issue two, brother. Take care, everybody. Love you. Going to watch... Uh... Siren Records Monterey later on today. They always come out with a good video on Fridays.